What is going on, my fitness junkies? Hope everyone's having a good week. This one is going to be about myths and misconceptions on the exercise side. And this topic was brought to us by Dante. Thank you, Dante, for, for suggesting this one. And let's dive right into it, y'all. I've never even seen this show, but I liked that. Cool. So very first common myth or misconception is just the topic of spot reduction in general. All right. So like if it's probably one of the most common questions I get or just common misconception I hear on calls with you guys. And it's like, how can I target my belly fat? Like, how can I just get rid of all the fat right here? The reality, the sad reality is you can't really spot reduce much at all. It's really honestly, mostly genetic where your fat is kind of stored and where it comes off or where it's added. And that's the sad truth. Um, for me, for instance, like I, I hold fat in my face, these, these chipmunk cheeks that I got. So like, it's going to be the last thing to go as I'm leaning out. And it's always the first thing to come on as I start to bulk. So there's just certain areas for, for different people where it's like that. All right. The only thing you can really do is just lean out overall. And over time, those areas will go away. It's probably it just sometimes other areas, like for me, like my arms will start leaning out, you know, my, my, what else? Like my, my chest, um, even parts of like my midsection will start, um, going away, but like the love handles is one thing. And then my cheeks. So there's just certain areas that are going to be like the last to go. So it's just mostly genetic. You just need to lean out overall. And over time, it will also lean out in those areas. It just, it just takes a while. Um, you can do a little bit to spot reduce the, the best you can do is just build muscle in that area. And that's going to increase a little bit of blood flow to that area. And that'll help you burn fat in that area. So like increasing the size of your actual abdominal muscles will increase like a little bit of, of the blood flow to that area and cause, cause it's cause you so that you can target that area a little bit more, but it's, it's very minuscule. It's, it's almost just more realistic to say that spot reduction is a myth. Um, but just losing weight overall, being in a caloric deficit, leaning out overall, that's how you're going to reduce the overall fat all over your body. Um, and there's just certain areas that are kind of the last to go. It's just the way it is. So that's the first one. That's probably the most, most common misconception I hear is like, how can I target this certain area? Okay. So I hope that helps you guys think about that. Um, this is also a huge misconception that I hear all the time, especially from females, just trying to do a bunch of cardio to lose weight. They're like, I don't want to lift weights. I don't want to get bulky. I just want to do cardio so that I can lose weight. All right. If you just do a ton of cardio to try to lose weight, um, not only is that a recipe to plateau super quickly, but you'll also lose muscle because you're not doing anything to challenge your actual muscle groups. So there's, you're not doing any stimuli, um, for those muscles. So there's no reason to hold on to muscle as you just lose weight, you're going to lose muscle as well. Okay. You can really, honestly, I, I don't, know why this is dying so hard, but you really can burn a very similar amount of calories in the same time period with resistance training as you can, um, cardio with the added benefit of also maintaining, if not building some muscle and strength at the same time. So it really is more efficient and effective, especially because the more muscle you add, the more calories you can burn at rest. Okay. So set up your diet to be in a deficit. If you're trying to lose weight, um, get your steps in, prioritize resistance training, and this is going to give you the most optimal results. Okay. Cause you're at least going to maintain muscle, if not build muscle, depending on how much of a deficit we have you in, how rapidly we're trying to lose fat and weight overall. Okay. So I hope that really hits home. I've done a whole topic on this before, but this is always a common misconception that I feel like just really needs to be hit home. Cool. So this one, man, this, this myth is dying super hard. I still see, like, even when I was in high school, all the coaches taught this, everyone still, a lot of people still think this, but the myth of you should stretch before, before your workouts, all right, static stretching. So like, you know, regular stretching where you hold a stretch that you want to save that till after your workout. 
Okay, the dynamic warm up that I have you guys do is going to better prepare you for your workouts. It's going to get you nice and loose. Um, you're, it's still basically like stretching in movement, but it's going to pr better prepare you for the workouts um, to get you ready to do what you're going to do, what, whether it really is cardio or lifting. Okay. Um, post workout is really when you want to save the static stretching. Uh, that's when your body is most primed when you've got your blood flowing. That's actually when you can get the best stretching in. So it's the best time to get stretching. That's actually when you can like increase your flexibility the most. Um, and stretching beforehand, doing static stretching before the workout can actually take away from the workout. It can lower your strength and power um, by, by stretching before the workout. I have seen new information now that um, kind of stretching towards the end of the workout is okay. So like, you know, now that's what actually what I do now, like in my last couple of sets of what I'm doing, I start doing my stretching there to save even more time so that I don't just have to complete the whole workout and then stretch. I kind of do it in between my last sets of each workout. So that's another little tip of efficiency for you guys. But yeah, this one's dying hard. I don't know why, because <laughs> I feel like when I was in school, like they, they taught this in like every exercise physiology class is like, this is a myth. Um, so hopefully everyone in here knows this now stretching. You want to save that for the very end. All right. Do the dynamic warm up. That's going to prepare you for the workout. Okay, cool. So this is another huge one is women should do higher reps to stay toned. But I hear this for men too. You know, some people are just like, I want to get toned. So I want to do higher reps. All right. So building muscle and losing fat is the same formula. Okay. So strength and hypertrophy rep ranges, that's that's going to build muscle, okay? And setting up your diet is what's going to allow you to look lean, and that's what gives you the tone effect. It's not that like doing higher reps. Higher reps is actually, if you go too high, if you get out of the hypertrophy rep range and you just get into the muscular endurance rep range, then you're just building your muscular endurance, okay? You're actually not doing much for your, for your muscles at all besides just building endurance. It's not really going to give you that tone effect because it's not actually building muscle. Okay. So you could be doing that and not have your diet set up right. And you could just be not doing much for your muscles and gaining fat. Okay. So really you want to be setting up your workouts to be in that strength by hypertrophy rep range so that you can build muscle and then setting up your diet so that you're losing fat at the same time. Okay. It's, it's ridiculous when people say, I don't want to get too big. Trust me, if it was that easy <laughs> to get big, we'd have a bunch of Olympia stage competitors walking around. All right, you're not just going to go and work out one type of one, two times a week doing strength and hypertrophy rep range and just start putting on a, a ton of muscle. It's just super unrealistic. So trust me, <laughs> if you want to get toned, it's the same thing. You want to do strength and hypertrophy rep ranges, set your diet up to lose fat. That's how you do it. Okay. Cool. So this one I feel like is in just like the hustle and grind fitness culture a lot. And it's that you need to work out first thing in the morning for the best results. I also hear like, you know, waking up doing fasted workouts is going to burn more fat. Honestly, guys, like the best time to work out. I think I actually was talking to, to Rupak about this today um, who just joined in and he's already on the first call. Um, but he, he was asking like, what's the most optimal time to work out really? And what I told him is like, the time that works best for you, what's going to allow you to be most consistent, that's when you should work out because that's the biggest factor on if you're actually getting there and doing the work. Okay. It doesn't matter if, if you're like, man, like, um, you know, I, I want to get there in the morning. And so, and then you try to get there in the morning, you only end up working out like one time a week because you just don't want to get up early. Um, then you're not doing better than if, if you just went whenever you could, um, and that you could actually get there and you went two, three times a week plus. Okay. So it's just whatever, whenever you can actually stay consistent, that's when I want you guys to go. Um, sure. Like doing fasted cardio, there's some very slight benefits to burning a little bit more fat. It's not that much of a factor guys. It's kind of like what we talk about with nutri um, nutrition with like nutrient timing, isn't that much of a factor and worry about the calories and macros kind of same thing with the workouts. Like the timing of your workouts, isn't that big of a factor. Um, actually getting it in and getting good workouts, that's what's going to give you the results, obviously. Okay, so I did tell Rupak though, you know, if especially if you're trying to put on muscle and strength and actually perform well in the gym, 
then I honestly think getting a, a meal or two in you before you go is going benefit, to benefit you even more. Okay. So, so that, that's just my opinion. Um, yeah. Cause it's easier to, to perform in the workouts. So a lot of times, like I don't like to train fasted because I, I don't feel as strong. Honestly, I don't have as much fuel. I don't have as much glycogen in my muscles. So if you can work out early, that's great. If that's wor- if that's what works for you, fantastic. I had to work out at five in the morning when I had an eight to five job for, I, I don't know. I did that for like seven months straight. I was working out at like 5 a.m. Cause that's all I could do. That's the only time I really had. Cause I was doing an eight to five. I've said this a bunch of time. Some of you guys are probably sick of hearing me say this, but um, like I was waking up, working out, going to my eight to five. Then I was doing this kind of stuff on the side, running my business on the side. Okay. So, um, you know, I understand that some people, the morning is the best time. If you can do that. Great. Um, if you're not a morning person, you don't need to force yourself to be. Okay. All right, cool. Um, yeah. So pretty much hit everything on there without even reading it. So good stuff. Cool. Another one. I hear this a lot. Um, people still think this a whole lot and it's that the more you sweat, the more calories you burn. Okay. A lot of people think, Oh man, I was sweating. I had a really good workout. All right. So you actually burn more calories in the cold believe it or not, because your body's working to stay warm. It actually is like you, you have literal physical effects that happen, like shivering that actually burns more calories. Like the, your body is actively um, warming itself and, and burning more calories by doing things like shivering and, and just producing more heat. Okay. So you actually burn more calories in the cold, believe it or not. Okay. Sweating doesn't equal calories burned. All right. It will obviously like you could lose some water weight. Like a lot of you guys that did the challenge, I had you get a little extra sweating towards the end. That wasn't to burn more calories. It was to lose some water weight, look more dry, um, and just kind of get rid of all that unnecessary water weight to, to help you look good for your progress pictures. Okay. But sweating isn't meaning you're burning more calories. Okay. You're just losing water and sodium. All right. So don't use sweating a lot as a measure of a good workout. Okay nothing wrong with sweating, you know, sweating is still a good thing, but that doesn't mean that that's like, all right, like I'm going to try to aim to sweat a whole lot to know that it's a good workout. Cool. So this is something, you know, you'll hear people say like, I work out so that I can eat whatever I want. Okay. So the myth is like, you can eat whatever you want. If you just exercise enough, this is extremely hard to accomplish. Like the more I've trained people, the more I've figured out that it's honestly more about the diet side if you really want to reach your goals than it is about the workout side. I mean, it's debatable. That I, A lot of people are like, it's 80% diet. I wouldn't say it's that much. I would say it's kind of maybe like 60, 40, um, leaning towards the diet side. You definitely still need to get the right stimulus cardio-wise and resistance training-wise um, to, to produce results. But, you know, the diet side is so huge. And if you're if you're just eating whatever you want, you're not going to reach your goals. Okay. You're, you're much better off working smarter and not harder, setting up your diet, right? Reward yourself. Because in my opinion, you know, it's much easier to take 500 calories away than it is to burn an extra 500 calories. Okay. Burning an extra 500 calories. That's like an extra hour of res- or it's not resistance training, an extra hour of cardio, like an extra hour of doing incline walking, something like that. Like I would much rather just eat 500 calories less. It's so much easier for me to just take under, take 500 calories away than it is to, to go and do an extra hour of cardio. Okay. That that's my personal opinion. I I'm like, whenever I'm leaning out, I'm mostly manipulating, mostly pulling the lever of the diet side than I am like trying to burn extra calories. So, and you know, for you guys that are putting on muscle, same thing. Don't just think of it as like dirty bulky and just eating whatever you want. So you put on size because I've made that mistake in the past as well. I've dirty bulked. It became way too big. Just put on a ton of fat. I was probably like 25% body fat at one point, which at right now I'm like below 15%. So you're just putting on unnecessary body fat when you're bulking that dirty. So set your diet up so that you're just you know, adding pure muscle. And that's going to help you out a whole lot in the long run, because then if you just put on too much fat, then you're just going to have to lean out. You're probably going to lose some muscle when you have to lean out. It's just going to make it so that you're kind of yo-yoing back and forth. Okay. So make it easier on yourself. Do work smarter, not harder. And don't just think that you can eat whatever you want um, and just exercise to reach the goals that you have. Cool. 
And this one I've talked about on social media a whole lot. Um, and it's that people say you can't build muscle and lose fat at the same time. And this is basically what I specialize in. All right. So these are the top three from the challenge that we just had. Um, Joey obviously put on muscle, lost fat. Micah, same thing. Mark, you can tell like a lot of you guys did. Okay. It's most of my clients honestly accomplished this. All right. This is called recomposition where you're building muscle and losing fat at the same time. Sometimes we don't do it at the exact same time. You know, for some of you guys, maybe we lean you out first, get you nice and lean, and then we build muscle. I would say that's sometimes an easier process um, because you can just focus on one thing. Um, but honestly, guys, you can still focus on both at the same time, especially if you're newer to uh, to to working out or doing resistance training. Because if you're newer to do, working out and doing resistance training, it's much easier to put on muscle. So if it's super easy to put on muscle in the beginning, you can definitely accomplish that by just getting enough protein and, and honestly just being close to a maintenance. Um, and then, you know, if you're, if you're just in a slight deficit, we can definitely lose fat at the same time. So just about strategically setting up the diet, um, with a very strategic approach to make that happen. Okay. Cool. So in summary, guys, like really there's just so much BS out there don't just believe everything you see like you'll just see these headlines you know a lot of marketers you know even in the fitness industry are just trying to catch your attention okay so start forming like your own informed opinions based on evidence hopefully you're learning some stuff through these calls that we do um and hopefully you're you know i think a lot of you guys honestly probably have a lot of information now to, to make a lot better informed decisions um, but yeah, just like anything else, use critical thinking, try to educate yourself, learn some stuff from this, um, and be able to form your own informed opinions. Okay. That's it y'all. So cool. Hope you got something out of that. Let me know if you guys have any questions, um, but let's have a great rest of the week and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace. I'm going to talk to my clients that are on the call.